Hello and welcome to the channel. If you're here, you're probably curious about setting up your HOTAS in No Man's Sky, which has been very difficult for me to do. Uh, it was on sale, a buddy of mine told me to get it, and I spent the first three hours of my game just trying to set up the HOTAS so I could just fly. I mean, it's it was, when you're in the ship, that's all you want to do with it. When they released the next update for No Man's Sky, it, it killed all the other 360 emulators and stuff that were the workarounds for the HOTAS so you could use it in No Man's Sky. So I just manually mapped my own and thought I would share with you how you could do it and maybe explain so you could do it in other games. Uh, maybe you'll catch something because it took me a long time to figure out how to do this. So let's, let's just dive in. So you'll need to make sure you have all your drivers up to date. Uh, for the for the HOTUS and then you need the software. I'm running the SciTech X52 So it'll look like this guy right here So if you if you're playing the game you already know all the controls So it'll be easy for you to map But if not you could follow this pretty much to the letter and then alter it as you go So make sure you got a blank slate so you can do whatever you want with it So the trigger that'll be the first one we go with that's fire obviously left mouse so click the arrow and then you can do left mouse button and then if you pull the trigger all the way in it'll activate the second trigger so if that happens in the game you want it to still fire your stuff so we'll just set that one as left mouse button as well uh, then for the next one so zoom is the next one I think that's the right mouse button and I'm gonna assign it to that little button right right there that guy so click on that oh wait don't click on that click on this arrow and then right mouse button and then the next one we're gonna set up is this guy right here that one is gonna be our scan so we want C, C is the scan one click this check and then you can name it scanner uh, next one we're gonna do up on the top is this one right here this button C we're gonna make that change our weapons which is G so set it to G Name it weapon change. We're pretty much done with this except for the axes. Except for this last one, we'll do this one right here. Your your toggle, toggle one, toggle two. Uh, I do toggle two, put it down because I'm going to do it for landing. Set it to E. Land. Boom. Toggle two when I push it down, land the plane. So why don't we just get through all the buttons first before we mess with the axes? Because that's the part that everyone will want to know. It's easy to map buttons. It's hard to do the axes. You need to know this one key component. So that's fire E. I do that for my pulse drive, which is spacebar. Name that pulse drive. Uh, then this one right here I do is my boost. Boost is shift. Name that. So of course you can set this up however you want. If you want one of the different buttons to do something else, that that's fine. You can set it up. That's why we're doing it manually this way. Just set it up the way you want. Now the hard part, this is the tricky part it took me a while to get, is the axes. Also do note this isn't a perfect solution. The only thing that's going to be hard is the Y axis. The Y axis runs off the mouse, and I'll explain uh, why it's a little finicky, and I'll show you how you can mess with it. And, and tinker with it, but other than that y-axis, it's a pretty good setup. All right, so we'll, s we'll start off with the y-axis, pulling it, pulling it back, moving it forward. Uh, that will do with the mouse. The mouse is going to be already mapped to right here on your, uh, on your side tech. So you're going to need to find that, which is this mini stick, and just change that to unprogrammed. This one as well. Uh, we want the Y. So then we're pulling this back and forth, Y axis. We want that to be the mouse Y axis. And right here, you're going to have your sensitivity bar, which which is going to be important to you if the sensitivity isn't right. I have to turn mine up because of the, the not perfect workaround on the mouse Y axis. You can adjust the sensitivity in No Man's Sky as well as right here in this program too, in case you need more. So that'll, that'll do the up and down. Now we're doing the x-axis, the roll. So that is A and D on the keyboard. And this this is what might help everyone out, and I'm hoping it does. 
is so I tried programming where when you hold it left, it hits A, and then you do it right, it hits D, but it was just doing it one time. I couldn't figure out for the life of me how to do it, but I, I, a lot of forums, a lot of digging, I found it. So you want this bands button. The, in, in another program, you might be able to map map key to access Y or something like that. I've seen that in maybe a Thrustmaster, something like that. But this will work exclusively for, it should work at least for most Logitech and definitely for any SciTech ones you're out there. So once you set that band, so the left band is the 0 to 30, and then the right is the 67 to 100. So what we want to do is click on this one, make that A, and that'll just be left. This way is right. So we'll do that one is D. Right, pretty simple. So this part right here, so the the dead zone right in the center, that's where we don't want it pressing anything. That's when we let go of the stick and it doesn't doesn't push A and it doesn't push D. But so what you want to do is you want to be able to edit these bands. And I read somewhere to do f do it like this, 45 and 55. So you have about a 10% room in the middle. You can go 5% either way and it won't activate it. But then when you go the rest, it'll go A or D. And that's what you want. So the f so 0 to 45% is you holding the stick left, 0 farthest left, 45 towards the center. Once you hit 45, dead zone, then you'll start rocking to the right. That's when you get to the D. Make sure you hit OK right here, and then that's set. That's how you do the left and the right. So same thing goes for the throttle. That's the one we want next. It kind of works. Uh, you might want to mess with the center dead zone a little bit because you kind of Maybe if you want to slam it all the way forward before it activates you can adjust that zone But we'll do the same thing Hit this bands when I push all the way forward It's activating that 0 to 30 and when I pull it all the way back. It's the 67 to 100 So W is forward S is back W uh, We'll just We'll excel for accelerate, and then S for deceleration. So yeah, this is where you you can you know make it how you want. I'm gonna do the same thing, do it at 45 and 55. Now the only thing to remember when you're setting it like this is if you have the throttle slammed forward because you're cruising, and then you land your ship and you leave your throttle forward and you hop out. The joystick is going to be mapping that you're pressing W, so your guy's going to be running forward. So if that happens, just set this back to 50, you know, between 45 and 50 percent, and then it'll activate that dead zone, and it won't be pressing any keys. And that's it. Super simple. So in in the controls, it'll be just like that. It'll look blank. So use some keys that you're not using. So I'm going to make this. I'm going to make this one, and this one two. So turn left, turn right. Once you back out, that's how it'll be set. The rudder, we can do the rudder like that. So same thing. We can make this a band. One is for left rudder. Twist it right, two is for right rudder. So now it's just the left rudder, right rudder. Then we can edit the bands, do the good old 45 and 55. Hit OK. Make sure you hit the save button. Uh, I got a few of them. We'll just save it right to my desktop. NMS, No Man's Sky. So once you save that, make sure you hit this profile button, and then it should profile it on your little screen right here. It'll say NMS or whatever you name it as. And now you're good to go. Now the the joystick, you're mapping the joystick to just use keyboard functions. So instead of having to set up a whole nother controller, which was proving super difficult. Now, when I do stuff on the joystick, it just mimics that that's the key being pressed. So it'll overtake the keyboard. The X axis, 
is going to be the kicker here. That's where it's going to be super finicky. That's where you're going to be like, ah, oh, this isn't the greatest workaround, but it's, uh, at least what I think, it's only that part that's super bad. So I'm going to show you what I mean right here with some game footage, but other than that, you're done. That's it. It only took just a few minutes to set that all up. It's that banding part. Once you know that banding part, now it'll be easier for you to do this in other games that don't have HOTUS support. You could just map your own. Or there's a lot of games like DCS or IL2 games where it's different for every plane and you have to map your own. So hopefully this will make it a little easier for you. So in your general options, you're going to want to invert your flight controls. Just click this, change it. If you have it on tethered, change it to tethered inverted. Uh, but that's just if you're using the changing this to the joystick. If, if you're not, you might want to leave it uninverted if you're just using the mouse. And then I, I think the highest you can go for the flight sensitivity is 50. I have mine at 40. And it's, it's just that learning curve with that that funky y-axis. Once you get that y-axis down, it's going to feel super great that you have your HOTA set up in the game. Hop in there, throw it back, and you're good to go. Now when you pull all the way back, you'll slow down, boost forward, that's like holding W. Now this is the part I'm talking about, the, with the y-axis. Do you see that, that thing in the center? See how there's a ring? So with the mouse, it's a little easier, but with this, it's kind of difficult. You need, you might need to turn your sensitivity up, up way high. So the aiming ring, you're, when you have it in the center, your ship isn't going anywhere. So see how I pull it out? Forward on the stick, you go down, you need to bring it back in the center. So when you pull back to pull up, it'll pull that ring out. You need to push forward to get the ring back in, or you're still going to be pulling up like this, and you're going to be like, "What's going on? I meant to, I meant to go forward," and you can't, and you can't. It took me a while. It's going to take you a minute to get used to it, but other than that, everything else works. The barrel roll, the left and the right, the twist in the rudder. So yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Hope you guys hope this helps someone. Hope to get it set up. Please, if you find a better route to do with that Y axis, please let me know because I would like to know. It's hard getting used to this because it's hard. It's hard diving, then pulling back up, then pulling up again, diving, just just to do what I just did there. It's the whole bunch of extra moves, and it's not my favorite. Hope this video was of some use to some people and maybe it really helps someone out because that was, it wasn't a deal breaker for me, but I was going to be really bummed out if I couldn't use my joystick. Thanks for checking out. Subscribe if you want more content. Uh, throw a like if this video helped you out. And yeah, if you find another Y-axis, uh, you know, workaround, let me know. I'd like to see it.